Mr. President, Botswana endorses your choice of the theme for this session, that is, a watershed moment, transformative solutions to interlocking challenges. We concur with your observation that the current global challenges, namely the COVID-19 pandemic, the war in Ukraine, humanitarian challenges, and climate change are complex and interconnected, hence require transformative solutions. Given the interconnectedness of these challenges, it is evident that they can only be effectively addressed in a holistic approach. This further demonstrates the enduring relevance of the United Nations Charter, which 77 years ago established the three founding pillars of the UN system, namely human rights, peace and security, and development as interrelated and mutually reinforcing. Mr. President, I wish, therefore, to preface my remarks through which I will share my country's progress in recovering from the COVID-19 and towards a transformative and sustainable development by reminding this auspicious body of Botswana's road to development. Many in this room may only know the Botswana of now, which is an upper middle income country. This is a status that we are proud of, given that when we attained our independence, only 56 years ago, we were among the poorest in the world. However, we were fortunate to discover what has turned out to be the world's largest diamond reserve across the Kimberley Belt. For those less acquainted with the development path we've traveled as a country, this is not the entire reflection of the Botswana story. Our story is based on the humanity, the principle and tenacity that we have as a people, as Botswana. It is a story of the wisdom of our forefathers who avoided the misfortune that often accompanied the discovery and exploitation of minerals in other parts of the world, and electing instead to turn the discovery of diamonds into a story for development. Botswana as a nation would never have been able to realize this development had we not held firmly to our belief in the principles of democracy centered on the rule of law, good governance, and the protection and enjoyment of basic human rights by our people. Mr. President, I must, however, admit that we face an uphill battle in our investment efforts to attract investors to help us diversify our economy away from dependence on diamonds. I have stood before this General Assembly and I've engaged a different fora when the opportunity arises to share the Botswana story with a view to encouraging partnerships to augment our efforts towards diversification. I trust that those that are attentive to our call are more in number, and I firmly believe that they too aspire to share a part of our story. In the meantime, diamonds are still the bedrock of our economy. It is in this respect that the words of the Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, and the call for and the call for a common agenda resonates with me. I liked in particular the call by the Secretary General for a global view whereby power, wealth, and opportunity are shared more broadly and fairly at the international level. For my country, this translates into a fair and equitable opportunity to use the resources that we have to develop our people and give them an equal opportunity to contribute and share in global wealth. As we continue to advocate for the Kimberley process, I wish to remind this August body that Botswana's story is unquestionable proof and living testimony that diamonds with good governance are for development. In fact, diamonds are a serious matter of livelihoods. I'll be hosting a side event on diamonds for development later this evening, through which I hope to further broaden conversations and allow our partners, both within the United Nations, governments, civil society, and the private sector, to join us in ensuring that my country, Botswana, will also be part of the United Nations family espoused around shared power, wealth, and opportunity as we endeavor to realize the 2030 agenda. Mr. President, despite our challenges, my government continues to play its part to contribute to the international agenda and in ensuring that access to medicines by our people is part and parcel of their health care while ensuring that the economy also recovers from the pandemic. Vaccine rollout remains a precondition for a sustainable recovery, yet many countries in the global south, especially Africa, 
have not met the WHO's target of 70% of their populations being fully vaccinated by mid-2022. This underscores the urgent need to continue promoting vaccine equity through international solidarity, as well as addressing vaccine hesitancy by countering disinformation and raising awareness about the science-backed facts regarding the effectiveness and safety of the vaccines. Despite the challenges we encountered, which were common to many developing countries, Botswana has procured enough vaccines to administer to all eligible groups, thus enabling significant progress with 64% of our population now fully vaccinated. However, much more needs to be done. It is in this context that Botswana continues to play an active role on this matter and recently also joined other member states in co-sponsoring the General Assembly resolution calling for the convening of a high-level meeting on pandemic prevention, preparedness and response during the 78th session of the General Assembly. We also continue to actively participate in the ongoing process towards a possible elaboration of a pandemic treaty at the World Health Organization in Geneva. We believe that such a legally binding instrument will strengthen existing global mechanisms to address and react more speedily to health emergencies. Mr. President, I am pleased to inform you that as part of overcoming the challenges of global vaccine inequity and in line with our commitment to build back better and in a transformative manner, the government of Botswana has approved the manufacturing of the patent-free Corbevax COVID-19 vaccine and the construction of a vaccine manufacturing plant has already commenced. Additionally, the facility will produce cancer treatment and next-generation cell-based immunotherapy. This initiative is being undertaken in partnership with Nantworks, the Texas and Texas Children's Hospital Center for Vaccine Development and the Baylor College of Medicine. This partnership will enhance Botswana's capacity in human vaccine production, contribute to our goal of building a knowledge-based economy and help in preparations for future pandemics. Botswana's recovery plans include strengthening the country's vast social protection system to ensure the inclusivity of vulnerable groups, persons living with disabilities, which will go a long way in facilitating equal enjoyment of their rights while broadening the accountability framework as we recently acceded to the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. In this regard, my government has set a medium to long-term economic recovery and transformation plan intended to fast-track recovery efforts while advancing the implementation of the 2030 Agenda and its goals. In order to achieve sustainable development, adequate financing is needed for the success of our recovery efforts from the pandemic and acceleration of implementation of the 2030 Agenda during this decade of action. Responsibility and mandate to strengthen international law, promote human rights and gender equality, and most crucial, to protect civilians in challenging peacekeeping environments. In this context, Botswana shares the same ideals with many of you present here today on the principle of responsibility to protect. Mr. President, as already been acknowledged by the 2005 World Summit, states have the primary responsibility to protect their own populations from genocide, ethnic cleansing, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. As part of the Group of Friends on Responsibility to Protect, Botswana is co-chair together with Costa Rica and Denmark, will continue to ensure that the membership of the United Nations pays attention to this important responsibility to reinforce global action. In Southern Africa, we remain actively engaged through our sub-regional organization, SADC, in addressing the threat posed by terrorism and violent extremism to peace and security in our sub-region. To this end, SADC has deployed its security forces to thwart terrorist threats in the Cabo Delgado province of Mozambique. The UN response to today's crisis is a clear demonstration of its indispensability as the foremost organization in addressing global issues. From its system-wide response to COVID-19 to its swift action in relation to the humanitarian crisis in Ukraine and other crisis situations, the UN has proven to be fit for purpose. Nonetheless, there remains ample room for improving the organization's effectiveness in fulfilling the principles and purpose of the UN Charter. 
In this connection, we welcome recent reforms and proposals aimed at strengthening the UN system and enhancing its relevance in addressing contemporary challenges. These efforts include SG's development management, peace and security, human rights, and humanitarian pillar reforms, which are aimed at enhancing the Secretariat's ability, agility, accountability, and effectiveness in mandate implementation. Mr. President, for a small country like mine, the reform of the United Nations is important only in as far as to ensure the equal voice of member states, regardless of size. My government and I personally are therefore eager to have our own people represented and employed within the UN system. With our presidency of the ECOSOC, I believe Botswana has demonstrated its ability, including the capacity of our youth, who have received positive reviews from their support to the ECOSOC Secretariat during our tenure. We are, however, eager to see such accolades turning into real opportunities for absorption throughout the employ and hierarchy of the organization, particularly for our youth. As I conclude my remarks, Mr. President, let me reassure you that you can count on Botswana support and constructive engagement towards the successful implementation of the program of work of the 77th session of the General Assembly. I hope that Botswana can also rely on the UN system and our development partners and the wider international community to help us realize the Agenda 2030 and transform our people and country into a developed nation by 2036. I thank you. Um, <clears throat>